Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to build a uh, horse fence and before you can build a horse fence you have to dig the holes for the post to go into for the horse fence and all the videos I found online when I first started doing this were these guys out in the middle of Kansas with nothing but five feet of pure black topsoil that they could dig through with a shovel and I want to see those guys come to greenstone country where the bedrock is three inches below the surface and do the same thing here. That's not going to happen. But I didn't know any better when I started doing this. So I uh, followed their lead. I took a shovel and went down about half an inch, hit rock. I had a pointed shovel. That's a spade shovel, but um, didn't work. Then I took a post hole digger. I was like, no problem. I can crush through some greenstone with a post hole digger. Try that. That didn't work. I got a wrecking bar. Um, I did use the wrecking bar for probably my first year and I built probably 600 linear feet of fencing with a post every eight feet and I went two feet down for each one and there was days blasting through that bedrock where I would get um, an inch or two a day and it took forever and I googled it I just couldn't find any, any solution to it everyone kept saying oh get an auger with it no problem so I went out and bought an auger which I'm gonna sell this one but that gives you an indication of how well that worked uh, that, that almost tore both my shoulders off. It's a two-man operation. Um, but if you look at the bit right here, that bit is not designed to go through bedrock. Um, it's designed for small, you know, golf ball, softball size rocks to come up. And that is not what we have here. So again, that went down. Well, you can see. There's the bit. It's already worn out. And you can see everything else is shiny, untouched metal. So it didn't work. I finally got smart and never thought I'd buy a jackhammer. But it was around 400 bucks, 500 bucks. I got a jackhammer. Um, that was the answer to my problems. It, it was a little bit of pricey purchase to get 500 bucks. If you're in the country, you should probably have a generator on hand already. If you don't, you should probably get one. But a generator mixed with this jackhammer um, helped me to build probably 3,000 linear feet of horse fencing and paddock fencing in uh, just a few months. Um, the posts we're digging, these are smaller diameter posts. I use the six and seven inch diameter of eight foot long posts. And I'm anal and I'll show you why in a minute, but I go at least two feet down for each post. If it's 20 inches, I keep going. The only thing my jackhammer could not bust through was a piece of iron ore. Um, that took me forever. And when that happens, if it's small enough, you can take that wrecking bar and, and bust it out. Otherwise, either dig around it and make a bigger hole or just sacrifice a few inches and pour it in there. So with that said, I'll take the uh, jack camera out there and show you guys how to blast through it. Okay, I told you guys about the bedrock and all the rock. I keep saying bedrock, it's just large stone. But there are some huge boulders in here. I'm going to show you guys what we're dealing with here. So this is a cross section of my dirt. And you can actually see, I mean, you get a couple inches of just muddy clay type dirt. Right with all that is greenstone. Now greenstone, it's not the hardest rock in the world. I mean, you can you can cut through it with a jackhammer, you can hit it with a wrecking bar, but it's just time consuming. It chips off in these little pieces and it just takes forever. Um, but if you don't have a jackhammer, you can be here forever. Um, the other problem with greenstone is it's a, a natural asbestos uh, carrier. So you have to be careful um, if you do use a jackhammer Take a hose and just wet it down a little bit. You don't want those that dust floating around you. And you can see how it fractures fairly easy. But it doesn't matter because a shovel's not going through this and a wrecking bar's gonna take you forever. But the jackhammer, I can cut through it and pulverize it. And what I end up getting of the jackhammer looks something like this. It's just fine aggregate. When I get to that point, I can take my post hole digger and I can dig it out pretty easily until I get my two feet. Um, so that's a soft piece of greenstone. Over here, I don't know what that is. It's not greenstone, but it's hard. Um, post hole digger is not going through that. My wrecking bar will chip away at it, but it's not going to go through it very easily. And these are the pieces where having a jackhammer helps out a lot. Um, the problem is when you dig a hole, you don't know if you're hitting in this or if you're hitting this. Because I'm 20 inches down, I can't see down there. So what I typically do is I use a post hole digger and a wrecking bar um, for a few minutes. If I start hitting resistance, I stop and I go get the jackhammer. 
and then I, I can blast through it in a minute. Let me clean up here. That's some of the stuff you're looking at. I dug everything here came out of our ground. And if you don't have the right tools to do it, um, you're gonna kill yourself trying to dig this fence. The one thing I forgot to mention is there are tractor attachments for um, augers. And the problem with those is I have a Kubota over there, a 3301. Putting an auger attachment on that tractor is not gonna do a whole lot more than the auger I showed you earlier. You can't get the torque and the downward pressure to tear through um, this rock. Now they do sell a rock ripper bit for skid steers and they can apply a lot more downward pressure. Um, but the quote I got for you, a skid steer with a rock ripper bit was $100 a hole. Now that could get into the many thousands of dollars pretty quickly with the number of holes I have to dig. The other issue is, um, I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's just the landscape. You know, I'm not sure how you're gonna get a skid steer up in that terrain. So if you're, if you have the ability, uh, I still say a jackhammer is the best way to go. And you can see all the fencing. We bought this property. There was no fencing up here at all. And with a jackhammer, I was able to, you know, this fencing right here, 400 feet, I was able to do it in one weekend. Uh, I did all the holes one day and poured the cement and um, ran the fence the next. Okay, so why go down two feet? I said before about, I'm anal about getting down two feet exactly um, for my posts. Uh, number one, common depth make your fence line more even, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, the more important reason is these big fellows right there, thousand pound horses running around, and uh, this ground gets wet. The first thing horses are going to do is eat your ground bare. So they took away all the grass cover, and then what happens is they start walking along the fence line and you start getting erosion on your fence posts. And I gotta fix this. But if I wasn't down far enough on these holes, um, you can start losing stability in your fencing. <clears throat> You'll really see it back here where we're on a slope. These guys are harmless though. <clears throat> but you'll be on a slope and due to the erosion, when the horses eat all the grass out, you can get all kinds of exposure on your posts. There's one there I gotta fix. Uh, we started doing is putting rocks here to kind of keep the horses away, but that's not the safest thing for your horses. So um, what I'm gonna do is tear this out a couple feet, flatten it, and then fill it with aggregate. There's another example there. That's why I always go down at least two feet. And again, I'm not the Jesus of fence building, so there could be something I'm doing wrong. If there is, let me know. Um, but this is what's worked for us over the last you know, period of years. For your jackhammer, it's gonna come with different size bits and they're pretty easy to change out quickly. Um, my go-to bit when it's uh, soft clay or even hard greenstone, anything that fractures, uh, and that, that flat spade bit, I can kind of go down and kind of carve out uh, four sides of that. And once I do, I can normally take my post hole digger and, and kind of clean out that hole and get it down uh, pretty far. Anything more dense than that, I use these smaller bits because it's, uh, they're more targeted. All the way down to something really hard, I'll use that pointer bit. The pointer bit is good, but it's targeted. So it takes longer to carve out your hole. My, my jack of all trades is this guy here. Um, and you can see what happened when I hit a piece of iron ore. I mean, it, it bounced right off of it and carved that thing up pretty good. Um, that used to be a, a longer, flatter, sharper edge. But it gets the job done for everything else outside of iron. <clears throat> um, the only problem, not problem, but the challenge is, um, this thing is not light. So picking it in and out of a hole over and over and over uh, with the smaller bits, it'll work your back. I mean, you'll definitely get your workout. But you'll have your hole dug in 10 minutes instead of a day. Um, so we'll try all three bits up there. I'm not sure what we're gonna face up in these holes. I'm sure we'll be hitting some green stone, maybe a piece of iron, but um, for all the poles I've dug so far, I've only hit one big piece of iron I couldn't get around. It's always important to have a really good assistant helping you out. That's my assistant, Murphy. And by assistant, I mean he'll be laying down in the horse stall in five minutes sleeping for the rest of the day. Watch out, Bob.
There he goes. Down for the count. Clean house a little bit, and then be done. <laughs> So cost of the jackhammer, I think I paid four sixty for this one. I can't remember. Um, to rent this thing, I think it was twenty five dollars a day. So if you have a small project, don't go buy a jackhammer. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever big boxes near you, and rent the darn thing. Um, but if you have a ongoing project or a property where you're going to have to be out there digging holes and paddocks and cross fencing and everything else that my wife makes me do. Um, I would, in my opinion, uh, I would invest in one of these. This has been the best purchase as far as farm equipment goes I've made. Um, it's durable. It, it lasts. Um, and I'm not an electrician, but uh, you definitely want to get a generator if you're away from power. You don't want to be running an extension cord, you know, 100 yards across your backyard to plug this thing in. You'll burn out the motor. Um, so definitely get your generator along with it. Now every tool has its limitations. I'm not going to take a jackhammer and be able to pound through this exposed bedrock. I, mean, I suppose you could, but uh, it's easier for me. I just reroute my fence. I'm still going to hit this stuff, but the large aggressive outcroppings, I try to stay away from those. I also give you a quick note on planning. If you use a jackhammer and pound through and dig a hole, make darn sure you do your planning properly. What you don't want to have happen is you run your strings and you eyeball it and you mark your uh, post hole, you dig it, and then it comes time to set your posts and you realize you're an inch off and the lower parts, you know, an inch off from touching your string. Like I did there a little bit. Now that is actually just wind and I'm caught in that weed right there. There, so that's pretty close. But make sure you do your planning. What I do when I run my string, I'll actually take a board or a post and set it up so it's touching both spring, uh, strings and I'll mark it on the ground and I go at least one inch further out in all directions. So if that's my hole right there, I come out an inch further. That way I have some play uh, when I'm setting my post. So there's the first hole of the day. I got, I don't know, two inches down. This is what I heard. If you hear that, the post hole digger. That's okay. This is okay. That's dirt. That's okay. That's rock. So we're going to switch to the wrecking bar and see what happens. So with the wrecking bar, we can get some of that loose. All right guys, so I told you earlier, there's the hole, I'm down. Eight inches. 10 inches. So you have quite a ways to go. Before you get going too far, what tends to happen is when you dig these holes, you get some a, a tunnel effect, a cone effect, you'll start getting further away from your line. So when you get a foot down or 10 inches down, you take your post and just throw it back in the hole. Just check your line. Some off, not much. I'm off by maybe a half inch. But as I go down another 14 inches, if I stay in that trajectory, I'll be end up being off an inch. So now I know when I'm jackhammering this thing out, I know that I want to keep coming this way. Because otherwise, I'll be over an inch off as I get down there. And what will happen is you get two inches, two feet down, and I have to go back and do what I'm doing now, is widen your hole. And you don't want to do that. I stay on top of it early. And you'll be good. Let's see where we're at. See, that's more rock. So I went ahead and switched out the bit. The bit. It's a smaller bit than the jackhammer. So it'll cut through easier. But like a plunger, I'm just going to keep it up and down, up and down. And hopefully pulverize some of that rock so I can dig it out with a post hole digger.
So just have a few seconds. Now I'm down 15 inches. It's over halfway. So I'm gonna keep repeating that process. Pulverize it, dig it out, pulverize, dig it out until I get to my two feet. Okay, so a few more rounds with the uh, jackhammer. You can see here, this is my result. May not look like it, but that's all basically pulverized greenstone that I never could have gotten up. Well, I could have gotten it up, but it would take me all day to bust that out with a bar. The jackhammer pulverized it. So if we do measurements, I'm about 23 inches right now. I'm still going down that last inch. But I told you guys before, make sure you plan out your post. So the other thing we do is we'll check and make sure our hole's straight. So line up against my string. So you look in the hole, I'm as far forward as I can get. So I'm touching the bottom string. Look at the gap. So that means I got back up a little bit, which I should be, I might have room. But I told you about the cone effect. The deeper you go, the more your hole narrows. So that's what happens. So that's as far as I can go. So I actually need to dig out that part of my hole all the way down, which isn't a big deal, but you can see. That's where I started my hole. You can see it sloping in. All that needs to come out. Cause I don't want my post leaning directly against a wall. I want it in the middle so I can surround it with my material, cement and whatnot. So I'm gonna dig this out. Um, for this, I'll probably try and use a post hole digger. If it hits some big rocks, I'll set the jackhammer real quick. This isn't that big of a deal, but it stinks when you think you're all done. You gotta pour your cement and you realize you're two inches off at the bottom because your hole is going crooked. Straighten that hole out a little bit. It's still sloping down there, so it's still might be need some adjustments, but right there, right at two feet. So that makes me happy there. Let's check my post. Still off by about a half inch, which some people say it's not a big deal, but I spent the last 20 minutes digging a hole. I want the damn thing to be straight, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. So all that will happen is your fence line, when you're all done, you'll pick up all those imperfections along your fence line, which for me drives me crazy. So I'm gonna even this out one more time. We'll do our final measurement. So I took the wrecking bar and just busted out a little bit. It took me about a minute. But now when you have our post here, there's the bottom line, there's the top line. So we're dead on. So if your post is good, you're exactly two feet. So then what I like to do is, since I have my inch around the perimeter of my uh, pole, I'll take some of the loose aggregate and just dump it back in there. Just to find stuff. You don't want big rocks in there because it'll block your cement. That'll help stabilize it in place. Then I pour my cement. And there's 50 different ways to pour cement and, and set your post in a hole. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Uh, but I'm going to do a different video on how to build the actual fence itself, how to put the post in, do your planning, stretch the, uh, the woven fence and secure it. And I'll cover that stuff in that video. Uh, I hope this helps somebody out there. Again, I'm not fence Jesus, so if one of the experts out there sees something better, let me know. Otherwise, thanks.